Hey everyone, in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be talking about simple interest. We'll take a look at a couple examples, see where the simple interest formula comes from should be a lot of fun. There are two types of interest we typically work with, simple interest and compound interest. Of course, in this lesson, we are talking about simple interest, which is a bit of a misnomer. Simple interest is really only simple in the way that a fund grows, earning simple interest, but for most purposes, working with simple interest is a pain. But there are situations when it is used and when we might want to use it as an approximation, or for some other reason, let's just get into it and see how it works. Here's the problem. Tim invests 100, we're leaving off units of currency because they do not matter. Tim invests 100 in a savings account that earns simple interest at an annual rate of 5%. You see, we've got a few questions to answer here. Let's focus on the first one. How much interest does Tim earn after one year? Here's how simple interest works. We have a principal amount that is invested in the fund, that's 100. Then we have our interest rate, which is often called I or R. In this case, we have an annual simple interest rate of 5%. Now that means we're going to earn 5% of the principal investment, so multiply that by 5%, we're going to earn 5% of this investment every year because it is an annual rate of interest. If, for contrast, it was a monthly rate of interest, then we would be earning 5% every month. So we have our principal investment, 100, multiplied by the simple interest rate, 5%, and then we just need to multiply by the number of interest periods that have passed. The interest rate is annual, so we want to measure time in years. In this case, the first question is asking how much interest has been earned after one year, so we're just multiplying by one, which of course we don't really need to write. And so the answer to the first question is 100 times 5%, which is 5. In one year, Tim earns 5% of his original investment of 100. So now we can move on to the second question, which will help make things more clear, I think. How much interest does Tim earn after three years? So now we are earning that 5% simple interest, but three times, because three years have passed. Really, the key part of simple interest is that the same amount of interest is earned each period. So to calculate the total interest earned after three years, we just multiply the interest earned after one year, which is 5% of 100, we just multiply that by three, because now we've earned interest for three years. This is equal to five times three, which is 15. So Tim has earned 15 in interest after three years. The key difference between simple interest and compound interest is that when you earn compound interest, you earn interest on interest. Whereas for simple interest, notice that we're only earning on the original investment, 100. So after one year, for example, there's actually 105 in the account, the original 100 investment plus the five in interest that was earned after one year. But even after that, interest is only being earned on the principal amount, 100. Again, to contrast this with compound interest, when a fund is earning compound interest, interest is being earned on top of interest. So this quick problem gives way to a general formula. If some principal amount is invested, say P, earning a simple interest rate of R, then the interest earned on the investment of P at a simple interest rate of R at time T is just P times R times T. It's very important when doing these calculations that you make sure the time variable t is being measured in the same units of time as the simple interest rate r. If, for example, in our problem, we weren't earning annual simple interest, but instead semi-annual, so say this is simple interest being earned every six months, then what amount of interest would we have earned after one year? Well, we would have the initial investment of 100 times the simple interest rate of 5%, but it's a semi-annual rate. So how many periods have passed after one year? Well, that would be two, because two half years have passed once one year has passed. So we would multiply that by two to get an answer of 10. 
We've earned 5% on the original 100 twice after one year because the simple interest rate is semi-annual. If it were monthly, we would multiply by 12, and that would give us an answer of 60. So when doing calculations, again, just make sure that your time variable t is measuring time in the same units as the simple interest is being calculated. All right, so let's clean some of this up, move this to the side, and take a look at the third question. I'll scroll down a bit for this one. How much is in the account after three years? Notice the key difference here from the second question is the second question was asking about interest. Now we want to know total. How much is in the account after three years? Well, that's pretty simple, right? Let's just start back at the interest part of the account. How much interest has been earned after three years? Well, we invested 100. We're earning 5% on that 100 every year. Three years have passed, so we multiply by three. Draw this back to our formula. 100 is the principal amount. 5% is a simple interest. And three is T. The simple interest rate is yearly or annual, and T is being measured in years. So this is the interest we've earned after three years. The only other thing in the account is the principal amount, which is 100. So we could just add that to 100, and we would have the total amount in the account after three years. And that comes out to 115. 15 in interest and 100 from the principal investment. And so this gives way to what I think really is a better formula. Let's say that A is the total amount in an account at time T that's earning simple interest. Well, then it's equal to what? Well, what did we have in this example? We had our principal amount P, and that was being added to the principal amount times the interest rate times the amount of time that has passed. If we factor the principal amount out of this sum, we see that the total amount in the account is equal to the principal amount multiplied by one plus the rate times time. And that's it. For the most basic calculations, this is a very easy and nice formula to work with. So let's just recap this formula. If P has been invested and it is earning simple interest of R, then at time T, the investment will have accumulated to P times one plus RT. This assumes that P is invested at time T equals zero. Thus, if time is being measured in years, then one year is T equals one. If for some reason we wanted to consider the principal amount to have been invested at time t equals 1, then after one year, the time t would actually be 2, and this formula would not work, because having t equal to 2 would assume that two interest periods have passed, but p was only invested at t equals 1, so only one interest period has passed. So basically, we assume that time starts the moment that P is invested. P is invested at time T equals zero. And remember where this formula comes from. We have one because that's just keeping our principal amount in the account, but then P is also going to get multiplied by rate times time because that's how the simple interest is being earned. So then we could do problems with this formula all day, no problem. Suppose that 250 is invested in an account, so P is equal to 250, and the account is earning simple interest at a quarterly rate of, let's say, 7%. And suppose we want to know how much is in the account after five years. We can use this formula and make quick work of the problem. The total amount is equal to the principal amount, 250, multiplied by 1, plus the simple interest rate, which is 7%, so plus 7%. Now, before we carelessly write that t equals five, we wanna take a closer look at our simple interest. We see that it is being earned quarterly. That means we're earning 7% simple interest four times a year, every three months. So our time t, we could write it as five, the number of years that have passed, multiplied by the number of interest periods in each year, which is equal to four because interest is earned quarterly. And so this is equal to, of course, 250, multiplied by one plus 7%, which I'll write as 0 0.07, multiplied by five times four, which is 20. Write that there, 20, and this is equal to 600. 
So that's the total amount in the account after five years. We could, of course, also easily calculate the interest earned after five years by taking this amount 600 and subtracting the principal investment 250. And we see that that is equal to 350. That's the total interest earned after five years. Really, the only tricky part about a standard simple interest question is going to be making sure that your units of time are measured correctly. You may notice if we distribute P in our formula, remember the formula is A equals P multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate times time. If we distribute P, we see this is equal to P plus PRT, which if we wanted to, we could rewrite as PRT plus P. So notice the total amount in an account earning simple interest is a linear function of the amount of time that has passed with slope P times R, the principal amount multiplied by the interest rate. That's the amount of interest that's being earned each interest period. And the Y intercept is the original investment P. So the graph of the amount in the account would look something like that, where this point here is the point zero P. And remember here the x-axis is measuring time, the y-axis is measuring the amount in the fund. Additionally, if we just say that this is the point t equals n, and let's say the point over here is t equals n plus 1. So one interest period has passed from here to here. If the simple interest is quarterly, then this is three months. If it is annual simple interest, then this is one year. Anyways, the only point I want to make here, what is the vertical change from here to here? Well, that's just the amount of interest that's earned in one interest period, or the slope of the function, which is P times R. Again, just to make this picture a bit more clear, that is this vertical change. So each period, the same amount of interest is being earned. The simple interest rate R multiplied by the principal amount P. And that's really all there is to it. We could get into some decimals too if we wanted to. Say that 10 is invested in an account, and let's say the account earns annual simple interest at a rate of, let's say, 2%. I'll just write annual 2%. Then how much is in the account after six months? We can find that, no problem. The amount is equal to the principal investment, P, which is 10, multiplied by 1 plus the rate, which is 2%, or 0 0.02 multiplied by time. In this case, six months have passed. The units of time are years since the simple interest rate is yearly. So how many years is six months? Well, six months is half of a year. So we multiply by one half. Half of an interest period has passed. And so that's gonna be equal to 10 times 1.01 which is equal to 10.1. And that's it, that's how we calculate simple interest. Here's a practice exercise for you to try on your own. Tell me how much is in this same account after let's say three years and three months. And by that, I mean a total of three years and three months. So I don't mean tell me the amount in the account after three years and the amount after three months. Tell me the amount in the account after three years and three months. And if you're feeling ambitious, also tell me the amount of interest earned after three years and three months. Let me know what you get in the comments and I'll leave the solution in the description. So I hope this video helped you understand how to calculate simple interest. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. I wanna jump around when I think about yesterday Your smile, your style so fly